Christina Breeze. I'm one of the chemistry professors at Warford College. Uh, we're sending out some videos so that you can do some science at home with your friends and family as you isolate during this COVID-19 pandemic crisis. All right, so let's get rolling. Uh, one of the fun things that we do at Warford College every spring, every winter is the demo show. I've got my demo show t-shirt on. Uh, and we want to show you some of those videos from the demo show, uh, some clips. You can watch the whole show if you go to Warford College's uh, website, so www.warford.edu slash demo show. You can watch the shows we've been putting on for more than a decade. Um, some of the old live streams are archived there, and so you can watch those. All right, so the first clip I want to share with you is that classic demo, Elephant Toothpaste. Let's watch as some of our students do it. Hi, I'm Kayla. And I'm Donciana. And today, we're going to be making elephant toothpaste. Wait, what? Elephants can brush their teeth too? No, they're wild animals. Why would they be brushing their teeth? Oh, whatever. All I know is that if I were an elephant, I would want pearly whites. Well, the real reason why this reaction got its name is due to the foam-like reaction that occurs when we put all the ingredients together. Wait, Kayla, the real question is here. Can we actually brush our teeth with this stuff? No. In fact, this experiment shouldn't even be tried without the proper safety equipment. The reactants we use are highly um, strong and can cause burns to our skin. So, goggles and gloves, guys. I'm already one step ahead of you. So we've already added 150 mils of our 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is that strong reactant I was talking about. And we also already added a bunch of soap so that later on it can become foamy. Now, here's the fun part. You guys get to choose what color we're gonna make our elephant toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> We have purple, green, red, and yellow. All right, I, I, heard, a, I heard a yellow. I, I heard, heard a yellow. yellow. All right, so we're going to add our dye in. We're going to put a lot of it in. Yeah, let's make this really good. All right, now that we have the dye in, it's time for our final ingredient. So here we have 30 milliliters of potassium iodide. This potassium iodide acts as a catalyst, so it speeds up our reaction. And it also degrades the hydrogen peroxide that we already added in, making it water and oxygen. And this oxygen gets trapped into the soap that we already added, and, and it'll make, and... So let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, that was cool. Geez, Kayla, I really, I wish that we, we had had some fire in our reaction. Well, I was thinking the same thing. So we have these matchsticks here, and we're going to light them. If I can get the lighter. Yep, there we go. We're going to light these matches. And so, oops, here you go. So since this reaction produced a lot of oxygen, I can blow it out and reignite the flame on our oxygen reaction here. All right. All right, that was great. Now let's talk about how you can do this at home. First, you'll need some supplies. Let's check out our supplies list. So to do this at home, all you need is a container like a vase, uh, some dish soap to capture those bubbles, hydrogen peroxide, just that regular 3% we get from the store, and some yeast. If you want to up this into more of an experiment, we can start looking at variables you can change. So things that might be helpful are a measuring spoon to measure exactly how much yeast you're using. You could use a ruler to measure how high the bubbles get under different conditions. And you could use a Sharpie to mark your glassware. You could also dilute that hydrogen peroxide so it's no longer 3%, but maybe 1% by doing a 1 to 3 ratio dilution. All right, so those are other ways to make this a little more sciencey and to figure out things you can measure, like the height of the bubbles in your tube, um, and making sure that we keep some variables consistent, like how much soap, how much yeast, and how much hydrogen peroxide you put in each time. So show me some of your pictures of you doing your science at home. Uh, all you need is a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in any sort of glass container. I happen to have a uh, flower vase that looks like a test tube rack. All right, so you put some hydrogen peroxide in there. You can put however much you want or however little you want. Once we've put some hydrogen peroxide in, go ahead and add some dish soap. 
Again, if you want to be incredibly scientific about it, measure how much dystrophy you have. If you're doing this with kindergartners, just add some. And then make sure you stir it in well. Thank you, Gustav and Ilsa. All right, and then the last ingredient for your homegrown elephant toothpaste is a little yeast. Again, if you're doing this at the elementary stage, you want to measure how much yeast you use. We're using my tiniest, tiniest measuring spoon. One eighth of a tablespoon. Yeah, one eighth teaspoon. Thank you, Katie. All right, so as you put it in, you can see it already starting to react, but if you stir it, That'll help it get all mixed together and react a little more quickly. So, so it turns out... Wait a long time. No, you don't have to wait a long time. It'll start reacting. We can try adding just yeast to the peroxide without any bubbles. Oh no, it's overflowing. Oh no, it is getting ready to overflow. Look at it go! So with 3% peroxide, it's going to be a little bit slower than the stuff we see in the demo show. That's <laughs> Pretty exciting. Pretty fun stuff to do at home. Remember, do not put this in your mouth. This mm -hmm. is not toothpaste. It is <laughs> not toothpaste. You're right. Should we add a little bit of yeast to that first test tube? Your turn. Yeah. Thanks for helping us out here, Katie. Can we wash this off? Oh, you can just stir it in there. Oh, it worked as well. And so you can see it still works. It's the yeast and the peroxide that gives you that bubbly reaction. All the soap does is gives you a way to collect those bubbles so they don't just burst. All right, thanks for great stirring, Elsa. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, goodness, look at that. Can I put in some soap right. later on? You could put in soap later on. That would be great. See what happens when you do it. Oh, goodness. I think I missed it. Where's the go? Please share your videos with us. Oh, nope, we don't see need what's it. going on. <laughs> I think we go. Oh. Look at it growing. It's going. <laughs> Both of them are going at the same time. be this So one. in this case, we're using yeast as the catalyst to help with that hydrogen peroxide decomposing to give us water. Can I mix oxygen. through the middle? Can you mix through the middle? You do what you want, baby. It's your experiment. It's a good day to be a kindergartner. This time we put the soap and the yeast in first. Now we're pouring in the peroxide. All right, just pour it all the way in. You're good, Elsa. What we're using is not particularly dangerous, um, right? It's uh, the stuff we use on our injuries. Mm -hmm. Am I good? Yes. <laughs> that is a good little volcano, isn't it? If you don't want to wait for it, then let's leave it out there for a while, then come check on it later and see if it's empty. Yep, I still see the yeast in there. <laughs> so it's going to be happening for a while. Yeah, for a little brown spot. Oh. <laughs> what are you trying to do, Mom? Well, that's a terrible idea. Building up pressure? Yeah. <laughs> you can make your own erupting elephant toothpaste.